Hello everyone, this is INS Everett, and today we're, I'm going to be showing you how to overclock your Sapphire Nitro R9 380. This will work with any Sapphire card, but the specific card I'm using is the R9 380, so these settings will be specific to the R9 380. This is a 4GB edition. Um, I don't know how well this will work on the 2GB, but let's get started. <laughs> And gentlemen, the future is now. Okay, so we have for me an 1110 megahertz GPU clock and a 1570 memory clock. This is the overclock that I've done, it works perfectly. Right now, it's a little hot in my room outside everywhere in the house but if you hear a little in the background it's my fan blowing in a little bit of cool air just trying to keep everything a little cold um, so what I'm gonna be using is the Sapphire Trix GPU control center the reason why I'm not using afterburner is I have to tweak it a little bit to allow it to me for me to um, adjust the uh, GPU voltage whereas with this it automatically allows me to but I'm not going to be showing you how to do that my power limit is set to 20% so it allows it 120% draw for my power supply I do suggest if you're going to do that having a bigger power supply or a larger wattage to draw from on your power supply I have 650 um, it doesn't draw anywhere near enough to overpower it but I'm going to reset this all and show you what my base clocks are. So if you see black, that's usually because I'm applying or resetting what's going on in here. So I have my monitor on the left kind of showing you what's going on with the GPU. Um, temperatures are resting at about 40 right now. Uh, fan speed is a little faster than I like. That's because it's hot. Uh, it's actually pretty quiet up to 55%. After 55% is when it starts getting a little loud, so it's not too loud right now. But, first thing you want to do every time, doesn't matter what program you're using, just bump that up to a size that will let you go. This is 20% for this one, um, so I'm drawing 120%. Then, you'll go, instead of you know leaving at 1010, obviously you want to see how fast it'll go, you just increase it by 10 apply it, it'll set it, if you don't apply it, it will not run properly. Now, I'm going to run Heaven Benchmarks, and I'm going to switch to Game Capture. So this is a Heaven Benchmark. This is what I use to benchmark all my graphics cards. Um, okay. There we go. Okay, so now this is what I use to benchmark everything. Obviously, when you want to benchmark, you click benchmark. What I do is I'll click benchmark, stop it, and then click benchmark again. This will give you your maximum minimum FPS, and then it'll work its way down. Um, I do this because a lot of the times when you first start it, it kind of goes like it, it goes to a minimum of like 19, and then that's not really what your minimum is. It could be higher, it could be lower, um, but it just fluctuates. So I just reset it right as soon as I start it because then it allows it to start at a higher or gets way down. So after running the benchmark, it'll then give you your score, how well it did. Um, if there's no problems with your overclock, which right now it's running at 1020, don't mind the temperature, that's always inaccurate. Um, it'll tell you you know what your overclock is obviously and what it's running at now I'm gonna quit this recording screen so you can see so it was running at 1020 the whole time um, with a 1450 over here all you gotta do is if it ran smoothly you didn't see any red spots or anything like that um, you can bump it up another 10 and then apply it now you keep doing this over and over again until 
you notice some um, problems with it, like there's too many too much hiccuping now you may notice that a little bit because in some parts it drops a little um, but it shouldn't be like too bad it should be running a little closer to 30 fps except for a few parts but you just keep bumping this up until you get to where you start noticing problems. I noticed problems at 11.20 on here. I didn't want to fiddle with it and figure out, oh, can I do 11.15 or 11.16 or 11.14? I didn't want to fiddle with it. I just said, bump it down another 10, it'll be fine. Now on this, uh, you can bump it up to 15.70 without noticing too many problems. If you bump it above that, I've noticed that there's little red spots and things like that. I'm gonna see if I, I'm going to see if I can um, show you some of those without it crashing. If it crashes, I'll be back. So, um, it happened. It crashed. No, <laughs> my computer didn't crash. The GPU crashed. Uh, so, when I set this to 1600, it went into kind of a fit. And my whole screens, both my screens turned green, and the only way to get out of that is to go down, reset your computer by either holding the off button, or if you have a reset button like me, just click the reset button. What ended up happening was it didn't work. So, in the case of getting a blue screen or seeing too much, like seeing red like lens flares or blue lens flares or really white lens flares that you can't see through, Obviously, you can if you could if it looks normal. Obviously, you could leave it, but in this case, it crashed, so I had to reset. When you reset, it'll either if you have your program set to run when you start up, it'll automatically run. Go and you change it, drop it down to where it's working again, and obviously, that's your maximum overclock. I do not suggest doing both at the same time. Uh, when you're increasing, just start with one. Do your GPU clock or your memory clock. And then once you figure out the highs for each, combine them. Uh, once you combine them, you'll see how effective they are. And you determine you know, if you need to bump one down or bump one up. Or if you can bump one up, um, then you can. I mean, uh, usually you'll have to bump it down though. So... I think I had it running at 1590 with no hiccups on my memory clock and then I bumped it down to 1570 because it worked better and I got better performance with 1570 with my 1110 uh, GPU clock. I then, you know, finagled it a little bit and made it, you know, mess with my fan controls. I have noticed one thing about Sapphire Tricks it does not save my fan profiles no matter how hard I try it just kind of throws them out the window even if I go to the settings and say save fan settings with profile it doesn't matter every time I load up the profile it kind of resets them like that so I mean I'll even show you what it does I'll go there okay so I'll save it and then I'll load it again, and it just reset it. Like, I did. I definitely did set it there. So, I have noticed that it's had a problem with that. I mean, it's easy to deal with. I mean, I just it automatically loads up every time I load up the system. So, I just go in and reset it. But yeah, so this is now, I guess, for an effective overclock for an R9 380, 1110. 1570, the Sapphire Nitro Edition, 4 gigabytes. This is what works for me. Should be an easily attainable clock for everyone. If you want to mess with the voltage, go right ahead. Try increasing this. I suggest leaving memory clock alone because increasing voltage doesn't really change your effective memory. So I suggest if you do do this, just mess with the GPU clock. That'll help a lot. Do this with 5 to 10, incre 10 volt increments. If you aren't experienced, I suggest 5. If you're experienced, know what you're doing, 10. But also watch what you're doing because sometimes like, you'll start dragging it across and it'll go too high. And you're like, oh no, 
you can use the keys, your arrow keys to do this. It's quite easy. It goes by ones, I think. Yeah, by ones only. Um, thus allowing you to not mess with it too much. And probably not mess up. But that's the only way I could see you burning out your GPU. And even then, it probably wouldn't destroy it. It would just make you have to reset. And also, it overheat really quickly. That's what this does. This will add on more heat. The more voltage you put into it, the more heat you have to dissipate. I do not have... I have an air-cooled card, so it's going to be hot. And right now, it's super hot outside and in my room, especially with this running. So, it it's why this fan profile is a little set on the high side for most normal. But, if you have any questions... Um, if you want to see uh, how this overclock does in gaming, I have another video. I'll link it in the description and in the video. Um, it'll be showing up right here somewhere on the screen for you to mess with somewhere. And click on it. It'll take you to the video where I explain a little bit about the overclock and as well as showing you some benchmarking of what I did with this overclock. Most games will run 60 FPS on at least high settings with this overclock. Um, and I do plan to be doing an overclock for the 1070 when I get that. Um, that should, I should be getting that end of this month, beginning of next month. Not that I don't have the money, it's that I don't want to buy the Founders Edition. I want to get the uh, Board Partners cards so that I can get better cooling out of it. But this has been INS Everett. And we'll see you in the next video.